Hey guys, Kavi here from Ray Studios, and in this box I have the brand new Mipo Flow. Let's do a quick unboxing. Looks like we have a box inside a box. Let's pop this open and here we go. The Mipo Flow. Okay, let's take this out of the box. It comes very nicely packed. Ooh, we have 105 millimeter wheels. This is a nice P wheels. So they're like the mad wheels, but from Mipo. Okay, we take a look at this a little bit later. Let's see what else is on the box. So we got a few spare screws. Okay, we got the classic Mipo remote with a little LCD screen and a couple of buttons. Pinwheel here, pretty good. Manio. We have a three-way Allen key. The classic T2 with the extra tool here. A very small Type-C cable to charge your remote. And the power brick, which is really big. This is a 4.5 amps charger, which means it will charge the board pretty fast and looks very high quality. I like it. It's basically the same charger that comes with the Mipo Voyager, which was really good. Well, before I go out and get it all dirty, I want to take a quick look at the design. And this is a very special design. You don't see these kind of electric skateboards every day. This is quite unique in a way. And in a way it's not. This board have received a bit of like a mixed feeling from other people that Take a look at this board because it does look a lot like a board that already exists, the e-ball stock. So it's kind of like very, very similar. But yeah, I mean, at this point, all electric skateboards look like some other electric skateboards because there are just so many on the market and it's just a piece of good with some graphics on top. So eventually they're going to look the same. But I really like what they do here. So in the we have a kick tail here and we also have a bit of flaring here for the wheels. And there is a little bit of a concave. Um, for I can tell, it looks very comfortable. Now on the kick tail, we have a rubber pad. So this is both very comfortable and I think it offers enough grip. I'm gonna probably be talking about that a little bit later after I test it out. Now here, what we have is invisible uh, grip tape. So it's a transparent sheet of grip tape that it reveals the actual natural good of the deck. And I gotta say, that looks very nice. We do have a lot of screws off, and then we have these white lines, black line with the logo small. Mipo have finally learned the lesson. Put the logo small, it looks nicer, more premium. Now, when we turn this board around, we can see the huge battery. I mean, look at this massive battery in here. So this is kind of like a, like a short board on asteroids. So it's kind of like the same size, like a long board, but with a short board kind of feeling because we do have a kick tail. Um, but as a matter of fact, this is the first kind of longboard, shortboard I ever seen with double kimping track. So it's basically like a shortboard, longboard, and 80 board all in one. So we have huge double kimping tracks. We have uh, racers, so it separates the wheels from the deck so you don't get wheel bites. The tracks are pretty long as well. So I believe they're eight inch tracks. I'll correct that somewhere on the video if I say that wrong because I don't have the specs as it yet. And they have the brand new Mipo wheels, 105 millimeters PU wheels. This is one of my favorite wheels. They're very sporty. They're excellent for drifting. Now in the back, we have a couple of new things here. So here is the ESC. Here's the power button, the charger here on the side. Relatively easy to open and to close as well. So well done. This is the little details that you don't usually see. Um, but what I say is new, it's like the cable management is really nice. I love what they did here. So there is like a cover, hold the cables in place and you barely see the cables. Now, double camping tracks yet again. But now here we also have a very nice uh, motor guard, metal metal, that looks really nice. Now we also have metal um, motor covers here on the side 
also to protect the belts. And it's all black, so it's just a very simple design. Probably they didn't do much on the back here with the paint, just because the battery is taking pretty much the whole bore here on the back. So it's a huge battery with a big ESC. Um, I really like it. Okay, now it's time for me to go out and have some fun with this puppy. All right, let's go. First, let's talk a little bit about the deck. And this deck feels pretty good, except for one reason. I feel like it's a little bit short, even so it's bigger than a shortboard. So, I don't know, that's maybe because the tracks are very close to the nose. So as you can see how the, the, the wheels are almost out of the deck. And I have here the Tiny Mini 3 Pro for reference. So you get an idea of how big it is. You can see it's a it's slightly bigger than a shortboard. So even though this looks like a shortboard, it's actually closer to a longboard. So it's 35 inches, 10 inches wide. So I believe that's 90 centimeters by 24 centimeters. Uh, the deck is made of maple and bamboo. There is absolutely no flex whatsoever. And there is a little bit of a concave that keeps my feet really nicely in place. The kick tail, even though it's quite big, um, it's just barely usable. I mean, you can change direction, tic-tac-toe, but it's such a heavy board that it's not easy to do that like you would with a regular shortboard. Uh, but still, it's nice to have it there, keep my feet in place. One thing that I really like is that foam grip tape. Um, it's extremely comfortable. So basically while you're riding, your feet will never get tired because of this um, grip tape here they have with this foam. The, the other grip tape, the transparent grip tape, is also actually pretty good. It's very grippy. So yeah, they did a very good job with all the different parts. Um, I guess I would have liked to have a little bit more of some kind of like concave going up so I know where my feet should end because I sometimes find myself putting my feet right at the very edge of the nose. So if I go a little bit forward, I will probably fall down. But yeah, other than that, I like this deck. Here we are about to climb a pretty steep hill. I'm gonna keep climbing because it's like basically all the way up to the top of the mountain. So it's a good place to test the, the actual power for it. I already tested it, it's really freaking powerful, especially for the price and the size. Uh, okay, let's go up. Michael, my camera is, is following me on another Elixir Escape, so we are not, we are not gonna really be able to do full speed here, but I'm so comfortable on level three right now, and it's just climbing like it's nothing. I mean, for, it's like a mountain goat, it's climbing like absolutely no problem. So, Michael, I'm gonna try to go faster, see if you can catch up. Wow, it really goes. Okay, need, to, need to stop here a little. Speed bumps and bars. Watch out. So it's really fast on flat, and it also climbs really good. So it's really freakingly powerful. I'm gonna go to level four. That's where the real power comes in. So I tend to ride in level three because level four is actually it really has a kick. So you can see here the incline is really steep and then it just goes. So Michael is having trouble catching up to me. I'm not sure if the microphone is properly connected right now, but yeah. Michael, are you on, on which gear right now? Are you on turbo? Third. Yeah? Third. Third, how about you switch to turbo? Uh, I'm on three bars. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Let, let's do a quick, um, a quick sprint here. We're in a flat. Yeah. So tiny mini 3 pro fire versus hydrant. Meepo Flow. Yeah, fire hydrant, okay. We come to three at the same time. Uh, worth saying, he's on three bars and I am on... Should I film us? Yeah, I'm, I'm on five bars, even so I already ride it for a while. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe keep the camera in front at 0.5 the widest. Okay. Uh, we come to three at three, we both go, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, here is the deal. I, I have like what, like at least 10 kilos in you, right? Yeah. So that's, that's the only difference. All right. Okay, so we holding, not the brake, but we holding the accelerator yeah. to hold it in place. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three, go. Ah, it's very close, very close. Okay. I was catching up to him, but there was people here. 
I let go because of the people. I was catching up, I think. Oh, yeah, you were, you were, you were. Very close. That was very close. Wow. There was also a bit of an incline. It was a really flat. We got a couple of 2,500 watt power motors and they really deliver in combination with the Hobbywind ESC. Yes, Hobbywind ESC. What the so we have the Hobbywind 1928. This is a new for me, but I think they've been using Link ESC for like so many years. So they're jumping to Hobbywind. Okay, it's probably something new, but to be honest, they did a really good job. The Hobby Wind is supposed to clock somewhere under 50 amps. I believe it's like 30 amps. It feels like more, like it feels really powerful. So when it comes to power, there is zero concern with this board. It really deliver. Okay, let's go out there and test the trucks. Now let's talk a little bit about the trucks. I think previously I had said they eight inch. Actually, they're huge. They two 12 inch trucks, one of the longest ever on such a small board. Kind of looks weird, but yeah, it is very nimble. It was designed for this, for carving, for having fun. I think this is inspired after some of the surf cages out there, like traditional surf cages. So really good for carving, very nimble, excellent turning ratio. Now we have a barrel con combination. 108 durometers and double kimping trucks, of course. That's why they're so big. Let's put this together now. We do have what, it, what is like a little ring similar to a step in um, pushing. So that's to keep it stable, even so uh, it is still very nimble. Let's get the barrel. The washers are rounded also, so it's more nimble and have greater turning ratio. And we have the same right here on the back, double kimping trucks. This is the cable management I was talking today. It's so nice. And yeah, with these tracks, it just feels very great. So the one concern I have being so powerful, I mean, surf gate is not meant to go fast and be powerful. So what about this? How about having these huge trucks with double kimping and, you know, it's, it's meant to be very curvy. Is it stable when going fast? Actually, yeah, it is. But I wouldn't recommend going over 40 kilometers per hour. Uh, it's not supposed to be that fast, I guess. It's good that you have the power, you can use it, and you can maybe adjust the tracks a lot if you plan to go very fast. Generally speaking, uh, I wouldn't go too fast. The maximum I got it this board to go was 44 kilometers per hour. That's somewhere like, I don't know, 27 miles per hour. So yeah, considering that I'm very heavy and the way I ride, and yeah, that's not bad at all. Okay, let's keep riding. The max payload on this board is 150 kilograms, which is slightly better than most other boards, especially at this price point. But it is also a little bit heavy at 10.8 kilograms. So yeah, that's kind of heavy. Now, because of the kicktail, it's easy to pick it up. One thing worth mentioning is that the motor cover always touches the ground before the kicktail gets into action. So I kick, and you can hear the, the motor cover touching uh, that's not a big issue, but what it is a big issue is with big heavy boards like 80 boards, long boards, is that you can normally hold from the front tracks and pull. Now that's not the case here. Because of the shorter wheel base, the rear wheels are not touching the ground. Now I can maybe hold it the other way around. I cannot hold the tracks, but I could pull from the tail basically, but it's not very grippy, so it falls off. And if I want to carry this board, I can. It's just bloody heavy. So let's hope you don't need to carry this board for too long. The 
battery in this board, 360 watt hour, is pretty big, especially considering the price. So it's kind of like more on the premium side than on the budget side. It's kind of like on between, but it's closer to premium. So it's kind of like a baby Voyager on a cooler deck. That's what this board is all about. Now, before I sign off and talk about the overall riding experience and my conclusions, I wanna quickly talk about this, the remote. So this is like the classic hobby wing remote. We have seen this for a very long time uh, and it works. It's just comfortable on the hand. We have a wheel, we have a power button, a gear level here, and we can set it to reverse. We have a LCD screen with a lot of valuable information. Now, me being left-handed, I'll never get to see that LCD screen while riding, but yeah. I can still get like the trip distance, the odometer. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. We got the battery information and the remote battery as well. By the way, we've been riding for quite a while and it's still on five bars. It's quite insane how good the battery is on this. So apparently the, the this Hobbywin ESC is very efficient uh, paired with these motors. It's doing really good. We went back to the office just because the camera completely overheat. There was like a hundred degrees Fahrenheit out there and what's cool about this board is that the board didn't overheat so the ESC is solid the hobby wing one of the best out there um, by the way I think I forgot to mention a few things like the hobby wing have a smart turn on so you don't need to bend down and uh, another thing that I forgot to mention is the tracks are mounted on racers so that brings the center of gravity a little bit higher you can see there is a lot of clearance here I can put my both my hands under the board and that brings the center of gravity higher, which is something that I don't usually like, but it's more in line with surf gates. Surf gates don't usually go too low. They, are, they go a little bit higher, and that um, somehow makes the carving a little bit better. Now, another thing that I want to mention before I finish this video is that the foam grip tape is really peeling off. You can maybe see it here. There are many chunks of rubber here that are coming out. So even though I really like it, yeah, it doesn't look like when it was new and nearly fall the wheel. So I have an extra set of these fantastic Mipo wheels. These are like the 105 millimeters PU wheel. And here is the thing about this wheel. This is basically the same as the boosted wheels, the 105 boosted wheels. They're pre pretty much identical. It's probably from the same factory. We have holes here, so they make them a little bit softer. And it's probably one of the best PU wheels. I actually already talked about these wheels, not exactly the Mipo, but I talk about some other wheels that are the same, like the Cali Rides and the Boosted 105. Uh, one of my favorite wheels is they feel very sporty. One thing that this wheel combination with the racer, with the double camping track, makes it so you turn very good. So the turning ratio is fantastic and it's nice for drifting. So you are getting uh, a little bit really into electric skateboards and you want to do some, some drifting here and there. Well, this is a phenomenal combination for that. Okay, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, a like, subscribe, and all that stuff. There are going to be affiliate links in the comment section down below and in the description. It will help me a lot if you use my affiliate links. Um, well, that's it. Adios, amigos.